of our life. It's good. It's jamthehype.com. I'm here with my brother Alex. What's up, you guys? He attends South Broward uh, High School. Yes, sir. So, uh, just waiting for people to get on here. Uh, Will Fonch will uh, be on here too, man. We're talking about, if you know, like XX uh you know, a very influential hip hop artist. You know, he uh, he passed away recently. He's from Broward County. We're currently in Broward County. What's up? Yeah, hold up. We're gonna get this plugged in real quick. And we just want to talk about like, you know, life. Um, how X has uh, impacted the South Florida community, but most of all, how that relates to you know, basically process that. So like, yeah, I'm from Broward County. You know, I've seen firsthand that on um. I don't know what's going on with this live, but if, if everything's going good, y'all like throw a thumbs up or something. Make sure you hear me and everything's going clear. But um, yeah, man, like just seeing firsthand, you know, like I said, this is um, Alex Fitzmaurice. He goes to South Broad High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have, uh, thanks, J. Russ. We're going to have Wolf Fonch um, on the live. And he's had some, he does a lot of community work in Miami, Liberty City, some of like the roughest areas. And uh, yo, Will Fonch is a really good brother in Christ, rapper, spoken word poet. He had some recent interactions with X and uh, he knew a little bit about X plans and um, he believed that dude was changing his life for the better. But yo, like when things like this happen in hip hop, it just shows you that yo, life is short. So uh, first thing I wanna do as I, uh, I don't know if Will Fonch is in this. Will, if you're in this, let me know because I wanna bring you on this so we can see your perspective on this uh, situation. Um, but before Will comes on, uh, I got my boy uh, Alex Fitzmaurice. What's up, the life speaker? Like I said before, and he's he's an X fan, X X Tentacion. He knows about his music, bro. Talk to us about like X's impact on uh, Broward County. Um, on Broward County. How old are you? I'm 17. Just yeah. turned 17. So, you know, um, he he influenced a lot. He impacted a lot of kids in my school. I knew a lot of kids who go through um, you know depression. And they, they said, like, X even helped him out and stuff. And they, they were just really, like, heartbroken when he, like, died, basically. I was outside myself, too. He really impacted me, and I really appreciated his music. Um, I've been a fan of him before he blew up, before that Look At Me song came out, like, when he was still releasing songs like I Am and um, Vice City on SoundCloud. And, um, you know, it's just crazy, man. Like, it's just crazy how it went out. But, you know, I'm a... Big X fan, so yeah. Yeah, you're from Dania Beach, right? I don't know if you said that already. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dania Beach, Broward County. Yeah, which isn't um, too far from where X died. X was shot in a very un, very bad way in Deerfield Beach, Florida, which isn't too far from us. So yeah, no, um, yeah, man. So talk about like the impact he's had on like your peers and things of that nature. He, you know, man, like a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, we were they were happy to have like someone big from Broward County, like X and Kodak Black. Like whenever I go to school. They were, like, when it comes to rap, they always talk about Kodak Black, XXX, the Dachyon, and, um, you know, all those guys. And, um, they, in X, like, Kodak, like, you know, he makes, like, you know, lit songs, they say. But, yeah. like, when it comes to, like, deep stuff and, like, lyrical stuff, they always go after, like, X. And, you know, we just, like, um... I, I, he's had a major I, impact. Basically, he's not. Trying, yeah, he, yeah. He, he just impacted everybody. So. Yeah, and that, like that's basically like for the CHH artists in this chat. You know, what I'm saying you see a young brother. He's impacted by his music, influenced by it. So like, it's very important that like you know what we do is important. Like in hip hop culture, there's Christian voices and stuff. And um, you know, man, that the violent energy is just not the best thing to happen. So I don't know, like people, there's seven people in here. Like, what do you guys think about the XX and Tashion thing and? Yeah, X knew it was bigger than music. Yeah, I mean, you know, from Will Fonch is going to come in here. He had interactions with him. He was telling me that, like, X was really trying to change his life. And also, another person from the area um, who attends my local church's Lighthouse Community Church, um, he used to come to the youth group, The Hub. He actually was in this place called Sheridan House, which is like a... Uh, can you explain what Sheridan House is? Yeah, Sheridan House, it's like a um, Christian um, like home, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a Christian home where like low-income families, kids who are struggling go to. And people don't know this, but like X actually was in there for six months. And so soon, um, as soon as he comes into this live, we're going to talk to him about like his experiences with X. And like you see, man, the truth and all these different people, you know, they're like, man, like we really got to do something about this violence. 
So Will Fonch is in the building. Oh snap! He's in the building. Yo, Alex, how do we bring Will in? Cause um, you know, how, how do we bring saying? him in? Um, all right. So what's his? Oh, uh, yo. Okay. So um. Send him like an invite. Oh yeah. Send him an invite. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yup. You got this, bro. I don't know. Come in like he recently was doing some community work. He's doing brilliant stuff out in Liberty City. Had a documentary. Definitely want to talk to him about his interactions with X and um, like how Christians should process this, you know? I don't think it's fair to just be like, yo, X, like, you know, your music talked about this and that and like, oh yeah, like people, like social media really reveals people. Like, yeah, I don't know true. what y'all feel about like social media and how like you really see like how certain believers move, like straight up condemning people. Like, yo, you know, there's things as, as believers, we can learn things from social, artists who are in the mainstream. Social media, man, like um, they make it like, they make it look like a bad thing to take an L na nowadays. Yeah. Make, like, because it's like, like, sometimes, man, taking an L is actually a lesson, man. Like, it just makes you a better person. They'll be like, oh, L, L, you, you, you're not anything. Just L, L, this yeah. is you, L, do, L. Do you think, like, do you think, like, the hip-hop community, because I'm 26 and mm -hmm. you're 17. Yeah. So you, you really get to see how the artists under 21, like, 6, 9, Little Pump, how they're influencing these kids. How do you think they're like influencing kids in the sense of like where clout chasing has become so important and where dudes like hip hop artists will like chase clout even if it's like detrimental to their well being? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of kids, man, like I can see the influence, but it's sort of a negative influence because they're thinking like, oh, I should start like just trolling people, like being like mean stuff, like, like, oh, I should like, I don't know, like, they're getting influenced, but for the wrong things is what I'm noticing. Like they'll yeah. try, like they'll try, like to flex their money on Instagram and stuff. They'll, yeah, they'll yeah, yeah. Like, eh, yeah, like, I actually did an like experiment that. on that. Yeah, so you know, it was mean, funny. It was funny. People thought I was like really like flexing or something. I think uh, Will's in here. Oh yeah, he's um, in view. You. Okay, go live with Will Fonch. Okay, Let's see this. Will Fonch. But yeah, man. I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy though. Like that's why this music's powerful. Will Fonch. Salute. What's going on? Hey, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling all right, man. You know, just allowing everything to process, but I'm good, man. I'm thankful. Yeah, bro. So, um, to begin this interview, bro, like, I guess since the conversation, the hour is the untimely, unfortunate, you know, death of, um, XXX, um, Tentacion, uh, talk to me, like, you recently had some interactions with him. I know you do community work in Liberty City in Miami. Um, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to talk about that, but then I'm de I definitely want to like link that to other things. So, but to begin, talk to me about the interaction you had, bro. Yeah, man. So, um, first of all, I definitely want to say, you know, shout out to his family. You know, I hope they're doing all right. I hope they're doing well, you know, his friends, his loved ones, um, that have been doing, uh, that have been coping with everything. You know, I hope they're doing okay. The last interaction that I had with him. You know, he really, you know, this man, when I tell you he had a huge heart for the community, he was willing, like, the, the organization that I work with in Liberty City, um, he was willing to just pour out love, pour out help to any single person that needed wow. it. Him, him coming to the community back in February of this year was for a documentary that we did um, explaining what Liberty City looked at in a better perspective for the residents. And um, it was crazy the way that he was invited. But when he came to the documentary and he saw what was happening, it, he was moved by the students. He was moved by the life out there. And, it, and I, I honestly, to be honest, I think that gave him even greater purpose to keep living towards a po more positive direction. Um, the last thing that I talked to him about, he wanted to do a football game for our high schoolers. Wow. He just, you know what I mean? Like, I think the, one of the last snaps that he posted was doing a charity concert here in South Florida. Um, and he was just going to do that for us in, in the form of a football game. Like, he loved the children out here. I'm telling you, man, he loved the children out here. He loved the people. He loved the, um, the workers that we work with. It was great having him here. Man, the pictures that I saw of him and you, his energy seemed, like, really great. He seemed like he was mm -hmm. really vibing with you, really talking with you. It seemed like he was very, really receptive. Did you get that from him? Yes, he was. And that's the thing, too. When I, I'm not going to lie because I'm, I'm going to sit here and just be transparent with you all. You know, yeah. when I saw him, I was like, you know, automatically I'm like, yo, I heard this guy's music. You know, I, I, I had an image in my mind and started to judge him off of that. I really did. Like, I will sit I here and say, that. like, I really did. You know what I mean? I really judged him off of that. 
And I, when I went up to him, this man was the most inviting, most, um, you know, respective, you know what I'm saying, that, I, that, 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 that way beyond that I was thinking of, came up, shook my hand, said what's up to me, and, and, and you know, and, and, and just made me feel like a brother, you know. Um, my first ever interaction with him, you know, him, his peoples was with him. And, uh, and then he said hi to some of the students and some of the, uh, like I said, the other co-workers. And he was just happy to be there. He was just literally, genuinely happy, joyful to be there. That's what's up. So, like, yeah, definitely, like, prayers out to, to Ex's family, friends, and um, mm -hmm. things of that nature. What do you think as the Christian hip-hop community, how should we, we process this when um, we see, like, posts on social media, um, what are your thoughts on that, on how a Christian should approach this topic of, you know, X passing away, like, as far as, like, life being short, as far as not judging people, man, because, like, there's a kid in this chat right now, oh, he's not a kid, I think he's, like, 18, um, he went to Sheridan House with X, so X has, like, he's had seeds planted in him, like, he's had Christian influences over the years, so I don't, I can't really say 100% where he was in his faith when he passed away. Mm -hmm. But it's like, there's so many factors in this situation. Like, how do you think Christians should process this, especially Christians within the hip-hop community? Well, I definitely first got to say that every Christian really needs to be lifting his family up. They really, really Amen. need to be lifting his uh, loved ones up. You know, as, as, as believers, before we're artists or before we're any other position in life, we're believers first. We're sons first. And we need to be lifting that family up right now, you know, because they're hurting. You know, how do you, how would you feel if you saw the la the next, the last, the last time that you spoke to your son, he was doing such and such, but then such and such happens on the news and then you see him slumped over in a car. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, tough. they're really going through it right now. That's your son. That's, 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 that's my son. That's everybody. That, that's somebody's family, you know? So as believers, we need to be lifting that family up. Now, if I, if I specify more to a Christian hip hop perspective, Mm -hmm. what's happening right now like what I've been seeing what I've been seeing I've seen a lot of people say that oh I wasn't really a fan of X's music you know what I'm saying like I wasn't that. even you know what I mean you know I was I, I heard him on the XXL cypher or I heard a few of his songs with Kodak and stuff like that and, and they check out his music and see what he's about not knowing hey listen like a lot of the stuff that he was telling people about you know you, it had the uh, traces of depression on it it had the traces of all these emotional attachments on it. And the thing about it was, um, I, I, I like what somebody just said. I was just about to say that. Somebody said Ty Brazel made a good comment about what he was going through. And I read what Ty Brazel said, and it made so yeah, much sense. That. You, you know what I'm saying? Ty, shout out to Ty Brazel. Like, he, what he said was along the lines of, you know, he was, he was thrust into that community of, of the rich and famous and going into that, you know, broken, going into that unhealed, that can take a toll on a person. Absolutely. A lot of times, you know, as far as like hip hop artists is concerned, that was his, that was, a lot of that was his life. You see what I'm saying? That was his life. But a, and a lot of artists are looking at this as just a profession. They're looking at it as just a hobby. Like that was really him. You know what I mean? And he was, he was really donating. consumed by his craft and his art. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could, I could, from, from what I saw and from the interactions that I had with him, that's what I saw. Like, he was really focused. He was really direct, dedicated. He I was really directed too. on that mindset of just achieving more, striving more. You look at his snaps. You look at his interviews. He's always, like, hungrier for more, but hungry for relationship, too. He was always hungry right. for a relationship as well. You know, getting to know yeah, people. See, let me ask you a question, Will. Uh, my boy Prophecy, he's from the South Florida area as well. He, uh, he wrote, what do we as MCs have to do to get deeper in our music to reach them deeper? What are some mm -hmm. practical things you think as members of, I guess, not everyone in this chat is from the Christian hip-hop community, but those who are, what do you think we got to do, man? Do better, improve on. Wow. Well, I, I would definitely say in, um, one of the things, like if we're relating this back to X, he drew from his brokenness. He was drawing from his, uh, as from an artist's perspective, I will say what made him successful was he was drawing from his brokenness and made it a well for every other artist to draw into and for his fans to submerge themselves into. You get what I'm saying? He was authentic he, is what you're telling me. Right. He was, he he was so wrong. authentic. Right. And, but he, but the, the thing about it is now, if we look at it from a Christian perspective, he was authentic with this problem but 
the solution was to just express himself. You know, as believers, we know, I'm, I'm, let's, let's be honest, as believers, we know the, the solution is Jesus. But for him, his outlet was just to express himself, and that gave his fans and his followers, oh, you know what? Yo, if he's doing it, mm -hmm. I know that I, I heard a testimony from a person that said his, his, um, <clears throat> his mm -hmm. music was helping them get through this season of, of, of sunken, uh, like being sunken and being depressed, being depressed and everything like that. Eight-year-old kids, nine-year-old kids. But to answer your homie's question about what yeah. we as artists can do, right? Um, now, I work in, you know, definitely I'm in the spoken word era, and I see a lot of transparency yeah. within a lot of spoken word artists. And honestly, to be honest, we just need to be more transparent, and we need to be more honest, and we need to be more genuine with what we're trying to do in our music because if you're a, if you're a book of rules in your music, that's all people are going to look at you as, and it won't be relatable. But if, you, but if you are identifying the problem that people can mirror themselves into, and then you come with that solution, to me, that's, to me and my subjective view, that's what I see makes a lot of artists successful. Yeah, I was listening to one of his records, uh, Jocelyn Flores, and he was basically talking about oh, how one of his yeah. friends had committed suicide. And people mm -hmm. really relate to records like that. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Real, real quick. Mm -hmm. I want to see. Can we get another person to join this live? It can it be three people or is it only two uh, people at a time? I, I, I don't think. I, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going I'm I'm to chop it up a little longer. So. But, um, right, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Talk to me about, like, your reaction when you, like, heard the news. I mean, for you, it had to be crazy because you had been talking uh, to him at this event just four months ago. Yes. So and so that's the thing. Like I was talking to him at the event four months ago, and then another interaction happened um, within our organization um, a little after that. You know, and I was able wow. to you know assist him a little bit more. But you know, for the time being, I was thankful for the time that I did have him. And you could tell what the information that he was giving to the people at this meeting. He wanted to change their lives. You know, I'm going to say this, you know, he, he was basing himself on a concept of energy, the concept of the universe, a concept of this and that. You could, but you know, at 20 years old, right? Who, yeah. Everybody has their stories at 20 years old. And this man, I guarantee you, he was, he was going to be on the path to really renew himself as the years went by. Who he, who he was going to be at 21, who he was going to be at 25, ex at 30. You know, like, I'm telling you, this man has such a promising future for himself. Man, I'll, you know? I'll say this, Will. Bro, like, out of all the artists under 21 years old, I thought he was the dopest. Lyrically. Right. Creatively. Because, like, when you talk about the artists under 21 that are popping, you talk about Little Pump, 6 ix 9 Little Pump. Right. Right. Uh, Smoke Perk. Right. And, and X was just so influential, but, like, he really cared about the craft. Yeah. Yo, so, so, and I want to actually speak on that real quick. One, one of the things that um, one of my friends talked to me about, you know, with my students that I work with, out of all the artists that have been influencing them, out of all the artists that have been influencing them, X stood out the most because of his authenticity. And because, yes, I know there's this generation of mumble rap, shout out to, uh, shout out to Beto, uh, there's this generation of mumble rap that is coming in and influencing the culture, but with X... This man was really trying to convey messages with his music. Yes, a lot of it has some negative att negativity attached to it. Yes, a lot of it had depression attached to it. But he, co you were able to comprehend it at a level that that was unlike all these other artists today. So you could you could tell his music wasn't on the radio like that. If you heard him on the radio, he was a feature. But you weren't able to hear a lot of his singles and his on his uh, new album, The Question Mark. Right, his new Just album. You don't hear his new Billboard charts. Debuted at number one. I, when it when it debuted at number one, I, I'm not gonna. I congratulate him for it. I was like, "Yo, bro, like your music is is popping everywhere." He had fans hitting us up in our organization from Germany, France, Switzerland, Ireland, talking about their music, and it was crazy. You know what I mean? Old, number one album. Yeah, man. Twenty years old, the number one album. You know what I mean? So it's easy. So being that you met him at this uh, this film showing and with the organization you're doing, I want to actually like now connect this to what, what you got going on. Talk to us about like what you got going on in Liberty City, South Florida, how we can impact these kids that are impacted by X. What are your thoughts on this and, and what do you got going on? Well, I could, well, I could definitely say that um, with all of these children that have been impacted, with all of these children that have been impacted by X, 
I could definitely say that um, all of them have looked up to him as, a, as an inspirational figure. They looked up to him in such a way that they were like, you know what, if he could do it, I could do it. If he's, a, if he's, able, if he's able to accomplish what he did, then I'm able to do it too. But now okay. with that fall, you, you, could see, you could see the grief in a lot of his fans' eyes and in his fans' hearts. A lot of them are like, man, because of what happened to him, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Like, he was my only lifeline, right? But we as believers, that's our call to infiltrate them with the truth, the message, and the gospel of hope that comes from Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of kids in my community that are 13, 14, 15 years old that looked up to him as, as their only as their only guide for hope, you know what I mean? And wow. you, see, you see what I'm saying? So, like, I, just yeah, to be honest with you, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. It, there's so much. There's a lot. I'm losing my voice as I'm talking to you about it because I'm getting so nah, passionate. Man, you're about, passionate about it. I love but, that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really passionate about it. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Sorry about that. Nah, man, guys, <laughs> good. Bro. Yeah, no, no problem about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pro prophecy made a really good point. He was saying that a lot of the youth that he works with, they look up to guys like X more than like Christian hip hop artists. Um, how do you say like we should deal with that being like, you know, me and you both are within the Christian hip hop community. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like in general? So, so, uh, oh, shout out to Free Bands JJ. What's up, Javari? Uh, one of my students for Liberty City. Not even a student, that's shout my out. friend, bro. That's my homie. Um, yo. We, I got I to gotta illustrate this from two different sides. Christian hip-hop has a lot of repetition, and so does the other side, right? But the, re the repetition in Christian hip-hop has become so predictable that it's like, why listen to that when X is offering this, even though people are saying he's being repetitive in this, he's sharing his life, and I'm going through that right now. A lot of these Christians, although what they're saying, yes, it could be... Um, it could be educational, it could be edifying, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But when you look at a guy like XXXTentacion, I look at what the truth said, right? The I truth said what, the, you know what I'm saying? The truth yeah, said he was, relate, relate. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wishes he could talk to him and just, you know, offer him some advice. And I guarantee you, if X were to, were to translate and comprehend that in his music, he would, I'm telling you, he would elevate to an entirely different level than we've ever seen because X stayed in this pool. It's like a, a pool of emptiness, a pool of downtroddenness that people were just like bees to honey. They just he kept flying. He was drowning in it. Right, right, right. He was drowning in it. But the, the, the thing about it, let's look at it like people wanted to drown with him. Or they just wanted to walk in there, try to help him out. And even if they couldn't help him out, they were just glad to be, you know, just hear from him in that state. You see what I'm saying? That's something about that state. Yeah. No, nah, I definitely understand that. And I think another thing that needs to be mentioned in this conversation is the fact that a young man, you know, was taking violence, man. Like, hip-hop's not supposed to be about violence. You know, like, the negative energy that a lot of these artists are spewing... Like, bro, like, we really got to be on a mission. We really got to be on our ground. We really got to be this example in the Christian hip-hop community. Or not the Christian hip-hop community, the hip-hop community in general. So, like, right. I know you're in Liberty City, and I know Liberty City is one of the most violent places in South Florida. Mm -hmm. So, talk to me about some of the things that your organization is, is or that you're a part of, and the work that you're doing. Like, talk to me about how you're trying to, like, impact that violent situation, bro, because it's crazy, man. So, so what I'm, so what I'm doing on my end, bro. Like one of the things, cause you gotta pray in these situations. After everything that happens, yo, shout out to Damari. I see you, Damari. Okay. <laughs> one of the things, one of the things that I know that um, I'm led to do, um, alongside the great community work and the great school work that my organization has been able to do with the with the Miami Church Initiative. One of the things that I've tried to do is create a documentary. The documentary that X came to. And said and and spoke his piece to the to the students and the promise that he was going to give them. The documentary is a mirror, because I truly believe in order for you to change yourself, you got to see yourself first. How are you going to take off a pimple off your face if you don't even know it's there? Because we march in the hood and be like, stop the stop the violence, keep the peace, let's march it and 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 do what all this do all this stuff. But what comes with the action? What comes with that? What are, you, what are you really trying to do about your own heart to change your own household before you go out there and change the environment? 
That's what we're trying to do. I create this it, uh, the documentary, this vision that God gave me called Soot Striding Over Obstacles Together is a documentary that's been in place um, and, and, and taken over a, a, a wide range of aspects within the Liberty City community. And I hope yeah. to take it even farther, too, because what person wouldn't want to see themselves? What person wouldn't want to tackle themselves, their own biggest enemy? Sometimes your biggest enemy, your biggest Goliath is you. You're, You're right. your biggest enemy. You know what I mean? And, 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 if you, and it, but if you're able to see that, if you're able to see that you are your biggest enemy, then you'll be able to know how to defeat that. Like the great Michael Jackson said, looking at the man in the mirror, right? Right. You gotta look at your reflection. Right. You gotta, the, the, the law is like a mirror, right? The law of the Bible. That's right. So we can see our sin. And then that's uh -huh. when Christ's power and his grace, you know, comes into effect. That's right, bro. I'm, 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 and I'm so serious, bro, because everything, everything that he went through is what people are struggling with right now. Absolutely. People gravitate to him because they're going through it right now. There's broken homes, people that are dealing with addictions, people that are dealing from abuse, abusive relationships. They're putting themselves through their own abuse. And, 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 and it's the, the symptoms, the symptoms of everything that's happening, what, everything that he went through, people saw the symptoms but who's going to deal with that root? Are you going to allow that root to manifest? Or are you going to do something about it like X was trying to do? X was trying to deal with that root. He was you attempting see what I'm to. Right. So is that documentary that you did in Liberty City, is, is it out already? I know you was, it was at a festival or you had a showing, but is it available mm -hmm. for like the people to check out? Oh, so, so right now, you know, what's happening right now, it's, be, it's, it's had some showings recently, some exclusive screenings, uh, one in Liberty City, one in Key Biscayne, and we're working on another one right now, but it'll be out to the public very soon, the release date, not sure quite yet, because there's still some things we're trying to do with it, but I will let you know as soon as it happens, because it needs to be out there, and especially with, you know, with everything that's happening next, so yeah. Yeah, bro, um, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, how can people reach you so they can stay updated on what you're doing in Liberty, Liberty City, and also, if you don't know, Wolf, first of all, I'm going to make this clear, Wolf Fonch is a solid, great man of God, a man that I've known for quite a few years now and I have one-on-one -on -one interactions with him. Love the brother. So that's the first thing you should know. Second thing, he's a dope MC and he's a super dope spoken word poet that's traveled all mm -hmm. across, across the country proclaiming the gospel through his spoken word poetry. So make sure you follow Will Fonch. It's at Will Fonch TV, right? That's right. You can find me at Will Fonch TV. Uh, go ahead and connect with me through there. You know, I, I answer, I respond. Um, I, do, I try my best to respond. Just hit me up through there. Hit me up. Uh, also follow at the Ink Season. At the Ink Season, there's a whole bunch of content there. A lot of great artists. Shout out to Professor Biz. Shout out to DT. Shout out to Derek Diaz. Shout out to a whole bunch of people. Shout out to Jam the Hype. Shout out to Low Veil. Vale. You sure. know, all these different people that, you know, are in the South Florida community. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that's what we're trying to do. That's what, that's what it's about. And we preach the message of identity. Knowing your identity, knowing who you are, because if you don't, you'll try to find it in music. You'll try to find it in sex. You'll try to find it in drugs, not knowing that God has already said something about you as a son or as a daughter. Y'all, our identity is in Christ, man. Y'all, I appreciate you joining me. Um, I'm actually going to, I told my boy Darius, who was actually living in the Sheridan house with uh, X at one point in his life, that I wanted to bring him on and, um, you know, talked about his experiences with X real quickly. So um, I appreciate you mm -hmm. ju jumping on the live, bro. Most definitely, man. Hey, thank you for having me. Anytime, bro. That's that's love. And um, I, most ready? blessings to Jam the Hype, bro. Shout out Jam the Hype. Absolutely. And once again, check out. I wrote in the um, comments where they can reach you at Wolf Farms TV and um, at Ink Season. And yo, man, if you guys are just jumping into the live at this point, you can always, this is going to be up for 24 hours, so you can rewind it, watch it, and, um, you know, see what Wolf Farms has got going on, man. He's really got a heart for the city. So appreciate you, man. So, Most definitely, man. We, oh, that's what's how, up. How do we get Yup. How do we transition from this? There you go. Boom. All right. Um, we got two people that are going to come on. Um, Darius, who um, I've known from the local church. Um, he was on a youth group. He went to Sheridan House where X was there, too. I just want him. I want you guys to really see the impact that X has had on young kids. So I'm going to bring him into this. And then after that, we got a special guest. Um, Dove Award winning producer, Darren Mola. Um, my roommates asked me who Darius is. He's a dude who used to go to the hub way back. And really? yeah, yeah, way back, like before we reconnected. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, really good dude. And so we're gonna bring him in, talk about his interactions with um with X. And after that, uh, D Flow was produced for Lecrae Social Club. He's gonna give his thoughts on X in a few moments. So, um, let me see. I got my boy Alex Man from South Broad High School. He's yeah, the he's the uh, Instagram whiz. Huh. Your boy needs some training. So yeah. how are we gonna bring? I we're gonna do. Oh, my bad. Now you straight, right. homie. Okay. So we're gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Um, where do I search for them right here? Oh, uh huh. Um, uh, it would be um right there, Domingo. Or Domingo? Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see, I'm gonna write them in here. Add. Okay. All right, here we go. Royal Burnt Born is laughing at my uh, lack of IG live skills. Oh, What's good, bro? Oh, Royal Burnt Born, what's up? Uh, I just had to say um, uh, Oh, you know him? Her. No, it's not, bro. It's, I can't no, really... No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, Born. you know Royal Burnt Born, my bad. Hey, yo, I can't really hear you, bro. Can you hear me? Oh, you can't hear me right now? Um, this is... uh. All right, left real quick. Let me see if I can add him one back in. Um, that's the homie. He actually went to Sheridan House. Now you can hear. And he actually interacted with X. So, Mingo in the cut. All right, let me see real quick. How do we add him back in? Hold on, let me see what he said real quick. I can only hear when I'm off the live. All right. Well, then, we'll just do it like this then, bro. Um, I want to ask you a few questions. You just saw him. Yo, this dude is a really good kid. Um, he used to go to uh, the hub at my church on occasion. He knows me from doing stuff in hip hop. And um, I got a lot of love for him, especially um, his aunt, uh, Sharo. Um, bro, talk to me about X's impact and um, how he's impacted you through the music and stuff. Because, you know, you lived in Broward County quite a bit. So, hold up. Let me see if, I, if we can get him in one time. Which one? All right, all right it's this one. That one right there. All right, I'm gonna try this one more time. If it doesn't work, then let me see. Yep, getting someone who went to Sheridan House of X. It's gonna be dope to hear his perspective. If he doesn't jump on, we'll just have him type it out. And I bring my boy D Flow, man. He's in the music industry, he's doing stuff with a lot of mainstream people. And um, we'll figure out what's going on there. So waiting, waiting. What are you guys' thoughts about what's been talked about so far with Bull Fonch and my brother Alex from South Broward High School in the Broward County community? What are y'all thoughts on how like Christians should approach this? Any thoughts? Any ideas? Uh, me decline. All right, bro. Um, bro, just type out like your interactions with him at Sheridan House, because a lot of people don't know um, that he actually has some that he's actually at Sheridan House and how you feel about him. All right, yeah, man. Get your other phone and uh, when you're ready, hit me up on here. Prophecy, Paul. How do you feel about NF and all this convo and XX Tentacion? Um, they both hit the nail on the head. I think I like what NF is doing. I think he's being relatable. I think he's sharing his pain and kids are relating to it. I don't know what y'all think about um, NF. Grace and peace from the Jesus Peace Radio Network. Shout out to y'all. Um, yo, D, you got to come in real quick. I'm chilling with my boy D-Flow tonight and um, he's in the building. So uh, not sure if y'all familiar. I'm going to type in his uh, Instagram real quick um, so y'all can follow him at it's there. Mola. Actually, he goes by Darren Mola now. Y'all know him by default for his production. Darren Mola. Really dope international artist. So, um, What's good, D? Yo, what's going on? How you guys doing? Yo, um, bro. So, like, what are your thoughts on everything that's going down, man, with uh, X and hip-hop community and things of that nature? Man, it's, um, it's, it's, it's sad because I literally went online uh, on my Instagram uh, today to just talk about, like, like I think you came on my my chat thing, and I was literally yeah, I was just yeah, I was literally just talking to um to whoever was listening. I was like, dude, like it's 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 quite sad that this is what befell this man because if you listen to his music, which I actually did listen to 
the album before the one he put out this year, I listened to it and I could only, I couldn't take, I actually could only take it in doses gotcha. because you could hear the darkness. It has like a heaviness to it. It was so heavy. But then this album, though, you see some tweets and he really literally just spoke about his need or his yearn to be better. And just in seeing and finding out all the things that he started to do, like for everyone, like with the charities and all that, those things, like it just, you know, it puts you back in a space where you get to understand that, yo, this kid was actually trying to better his life. Um, I'm so, I'm sort of like connected with people who actually know him. Or um, a friend of mine actually managed him back in 2016. Another friend of mine did some uh, clothing for him. And um, these guys were like, these guys pretty much said, hey, dude, like, this dude was a solid dude. The funny thing about this is every single person who has spoken about X has said nothing but good things. They said literally, they were like, X will call to say, I love you. Wow. Like, X will literally say... He was a thoughtful guy. He was a very thoughtful guy. And real quick, I don't want to interrupt you too much. Uh, fat, at the Fat Dominican, um, after I'm done talking to D, we'll bring you in. What are you saying? So, um... So yeah, has uh, uh, it's it's uh, has has he? Um, I think he has his new phone. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. he switched phones up or whatever. Yeah, so like I don't really have you know I I really don't have much more to say because I've like I've he was been, a good dude from what you heard. Yeah, because I've been speaking about this pretty much all day long, and at this point, it's honestly just like it's tiring. It's tiring. It's tiring. Uh, I think what's even most disappointing is you know just the problem with this world and our like issue with technology do you feel, do we feel that in chh we don't talk too much about our dark issues and they keep a perfect jesus is with me and i'm good all the time is nf the only one getting this type of feel to be honest um i've done a lot of like production the most transparent people i have worked with in christian hip-hop music has been social club and social club was talking about like we like we had a record called Sodom and Gomorrah, like from yeah. way back. I produced that record, and they, they were talking about homosexuality. Uh, how like Marty was like, I had a friend who struggled with that, for example. I remember that. Yeah, and I know, and I know quite a number of personal friends right now who are Christians, but actually struggle with these things. They struggle That's with true. with depression. Like depression is real. Like people struggle with these things. The problem with I don't want to say the problem with CHH because I don't think people need to look for faith in the music. And this is, I guess, this is a message I want to pass across because it's like, it's like, we can't just keep looking for faith in the music. Yeah, Grace Song was good, Matt. That was a great um, song. Funny enough, I produced that too. So it's like, that record. I produced Grace That's Song, cool. produced uh, S&G. Nice. But, um... It was on Misfits album? Grace Song was on, um... Uh, it wasn't on Misfits. Uh, I forgot the name of the album. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, to answer your question, I think CHH can do more. Um, I'll be very honest with you. Like, I'm only familiar now with the new voices. Like, I know, like, no big deal personally. I know what a part G personally. I know these kids personally. And these are all solid people. But they can't. The, the reality is most of these guys might not be going through that, too. And here's the thing with CHH is that a lot of people who do Christian music have struggles. But their struggles might not be as dark as people who don't know God the way they know God. So you can't expect somebody to sing to you about depression and their pain if they really aren't going through depression and pain. And I'll beg to question that a lot of people who really give their lives to God and really get him to really wash through their hearts, right? They might not deal with depression and pain with the, with the um, intensity that someone without God might deal with depression and pain. Now, does this mean they won't be depressed? Not nah, David... David sounded yeah from Rejects yes yeah, the Rejects album I remember yeah that. David if you half of the Psalms was David sounding depressed Ecclesiastics right too Ecclesi all things are worthless all things, yeah, all things are worthless but like David was very like his story like David was going through a lot people were trying to kill him like Saul was trying to kill him um you know and, and all those things but like his balance was all, like you prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies you know like there was always a balance. You know, so I don't know if a Christian artist, you know, might have that same, you know, that, that same depth. Do we feel some, like, NF will ever have a happy song? Um, I, I don't know if I can answer that because I, I don't really know what NF 
uh, NF's compositions. Um, well, I don't know what his future compositions will be, but if music is from the heart, then it, it is that that's what he's doing and that's right. what he's about. D, I got a question for you. So, like, you as a producer, you as an artist, when things like this happen, does that shift your approach? Does that make you think a little bit more about how you approach the music? In a sense, yes, and in a sense, no, because I feel like I'm, I'm, I've already, I've always been authentic to, to my, my sound. You heard my first album. Yeah. Like my first album for me was like really about, um, some would, you know, reach to say like, oh, you, the, your theme was about pain and blah, 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 blah right? Because I did go through a tough time. But the thing with my music is there's always a pinch of hope. And I think for even on my next project I'm working on right now, like I think for me that's also going to be the thing is that pinch of hope that, hey, like this thing is real. If anything, it's waking me up as an individual versus an artist. Does that make sense? Because yeah, now, now I just want to really be more vocal like and call people and say, yo, I love you. Like hope everything's good with you. Hope you're okay. Death will make you do that when you hear someone passing away. Like tomorrow's not promised. It'll make you like reevaluate those things. But this is the sad thing though, because I was saying this on my story too today. Like I'm just, I literally was saying it. I was like, like we just need to wake up. Like we don't need to wait for death to happen before we That's like point. start making these moves. Like we don't need to wait for death to happen before we start reaching out to people. So check this, bro. I was watching like a little clip, right, of X talking, and he was uh, talking about like how he was so passionate about his music and the message and that he really wanted to like make sure that he, had, uh, he left a positive message like at least over 5 million people. He was so passionate about his message. He I was. feel like a lot of people, at least within like the Christian hip-hop or Christian realm, they're almost not as passionate as people on the other side, on the other realm. And I don't want to put like sides or divisions, but I'm just saying like X really inspired me like, yo, be passionate about what you do. Be passionate about your message. Mm. Like if these guys who are putting out you know, more depressed stuff and sad stuff, if they're so passionate about making an impact and being positive, what about us who have the Holy Spirit in us? Like, we should be just as, like, we should be the most passionate people trying to relate, yeah. trying to, like, lay down, like, those well, scars and things in our heart. Well, that's, that's the difference between people who, I mean, it's just a deep difference, man, you know. Um, yeah, it is, it is a deep difference. I think passion is very important. Yeah. But you can't, mis you can't misplace passion, though. You know, you can't misplace. Like, a lot of these people, that's all they have. Yeah. So I, I'm, thinking, the gospel, right? I'm thinking for both sides. That's, that's uh, like, important to do. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm quite passionate about my music. Like, this, you, 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 you've you, been privy to hearing songs that I've not even put out. Like, and you know the story of those songs. Like, I have a song coming out called Heartbreak. Like, and you know what the story is. You know the process. You know what I was going through in my relationship for me to bring that out. I, I'm passionate about that. But I also know that I have God. So a lot of these people, music is their escape. So I think it, you should be passionate about the message of God. And oftentimes, music is just a platform to say that. And music is just a way to start and create the conversation. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I get like, that 100%. Andy's, Andy's last album, nah, that's what I'm talking about. The arrow, right? Exactly. But there's also a pinch of hope there. There is. Do you get me? It's not dark that it's like... It doesn't oh leave you God. at a dead end. It doesn't leave you at a dead end. Exactly. So clarity is important. Passion is important. But we can't misplace our passion. Music didn't... Solutions are important. Solutions are important. People say music saved my soul. I, I don't know how... I, I hear a lot of people say that. And I understand why they say it. I don't think music saved me. I think God saved me. And, you know, I found a, a, a tool to push that salvation out and let people know. You know, so I, that's that's my perspective. You know? Hey, man, I appreciate your time, bro. That was uh, Darren Mola, formerly known as D-Flow, produced for Lecrae, uh, Social Club. Man, just like Will Fonts, man, we got some really good dudes in this chat room. Point it back to the hope we have in Christ. Absolutely. I, I agree, man. Andy did a good job with that. On the arrow, I actually want to bring in the homie who uh, went to uh, Sheridan House. Talk to him a little bit, man, to see how X has impacted his music. It's the face, right? The smiley face right here? The two faces. The two faces, all right. All right, let's see. Let's see if he's in here. Yep, he is and still in here. Let's go. All right. So we're bringing the homie Darius. He actually, uh, I've been saying this over and over. I hope I'm not being too redundant, but he actually attended Sheridan House with XX Tentacion. So I just want to see, like, his thoughts on him. What's good, bro? Yo, what's up? Now I can hear you. I can hear you too, bro. Hey, 
like I know your Instagram username says at Domingo, but like Darius, right? I, 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 <laughs> it's Darian, yeah. D A R. Darian, Darian, my bad, bro. I've known you for years, bro. Got love for you, man. You know, love for Sharo, your whole family, bro. You're a good dude, man. Appreciate you taking the time to jump on this. Yep. Bro, uh, Darian, talk to me about. Oh man, Darius, Darian's close. I was close, bro. I, yeah, you yeah, yeah. He's on his IG live thing, but yeah, talk to me about uh your interaction, like your interactions with X. So basically, like, times you saw I him. him. I met him the first time I met him. I was on the court, you know, like because this this is a thing in Sheridan House. There's like. There's like three different houses. There's house one, house two, and house three. I don't know which house he was. I think it was two, but I'm not sure. I was in house one, so like we didn't really get to communicate that much because, you know, the houses are like pre separated from each other. And the only time we get to communicate is through like ports or like big events that all the houses come together at. So you said you saw him play basketball and things of that nature. I don't know if the connection's a little going out a little bit, but it's all good. No, no pressure, man. If you can get to a, I don't know what's going down here. Yeah, man. The connection down here is not that good. But I hear you now, though. Yeah, man. So like you said, like you played sports with him and stuff at one point. Yeah, yeah, basketball mainly. Yeah. He was a good dude. All right. So tell me about, like, how his music impacted you and your peers, man, because I know, like, you really rock with his music and stuff. So I just want people to know, man, like, yo, X was trying to change his life and um, dope hip-hop artists. And I, I want them to see, like, how he's impacted some of the youth in Broward County because that's that's where we're from. So Yeah, yeah of course. Well, I'm going I'm to be honest. Uh, the type of music I listened from him was, like, more of, like, the hype stuff, like, the – metal and rap type thing. I did check out his album, Depression album, and I know a lot of people that he's helped go through stuff because they, they suffer depression, anxiety, and, like, he he's definitely made an impact on a lot of my friends. Yeah, no doubt, man. You basically tell him that he's helped people out with anxiety, depression. His music speaks on those things. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. And I think I, I also think that like his his music, especially like his recent music is like he he gives something he gives people something to relate to. You know, to like so they could feel more comfortable and and they just they just like need some someone like that they can relate to, you know. It'll make them feel better, like it'll help them out with their situation. Okay. It's like they they know that someone understands them. Man, I think that's what art is good art does, right? It relates to people. And um, bro, I appreciate you hopping on, uh, sharing your perspective. Um, anything you might not have said that maybe you want to say before you hop off? Oh, uh, not really, man. <laughs> oh, not right now. I appreciate you even hopping on here, man, because like, bro, like not many people can say that, you know. That they had any type of interaction with X, and not only that, Darian, like, yeah. um, I think it's dope. Like, at least for people like myself, who's an artist, like, I like to hear how like art impacts the youth, man. Because I really want to like bring a positive message to the youth, bro. And um, I'm sure like all the other artists that are on this live want to do the same thing too. So I appreciate you taking the time. Um, how old are you now, bro? Eighteen. Eighteen. You're in Texas now, right? Yep. Houston. Word, man. Hey, man, next time I go out to Texas, man, I might have to uh, pull up on you, man, and say what's up. Yeah, say what's up to the fam, Chado, Abuela. Yeah, they'll hey. love to see you, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you hopping on here, bro. And um, I'm going to hit you up on Facebook in a little bit. And yeah, for, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time, bro. Yo, thanks for having me on here, man. Yo, Be blessed. Diga. God bless. Okay. So, yeah, man, any other questions? That was uh, Darian. You know, he was at Sheridan House, the same Christian home that XX Tintashian was at. Probably, I just pronounced his name wrong, but it's all good. And um, yeah, we had Will Fonch talk about his community work in uh, Liberty City. Y'all appreciate the support, uh, Royal Born, Kid Prophecy. Appreciate my boy Prophecy. Appreciate y'all tuning in. And um, 
Yeah, you can follow uh, at Wolfons TV. You can follow me at, at Paul Wrights 23. Shameless plug there. And um, I still got my boy from South Broward. He told his uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, where can they find you, bro? Uh, Kid White underscore 17. Okay. Yeah, with two Ds. Two Ds. Yeah. K I D D W H I T underscore 17. Sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is so that everyone that was in this live, if you guys want to check them out and get some. Um, updates on them i'm gonna put their instagrams in the comments so you could just read it and also if you guys have any questions before i hop off you know what we were talking about definitely we could chop it up a little bit more before this ends let's see all right 23 um will Fonch tv prophecy how you doing bro absolutely matt appreciate it bro appreciate the encouragement at Will Fonch TV, Kid White, how do you spell that? K-I-D-D. K-I-D-D. W-H. W-H. I-T-E. Any questions, y'all? I-T-E. Mm -hmm. okay. Underscore one seven. Underscore, we good, bro. Hey, man, I heard you was watching some hip-hop documentaries, man. You got some inspiration to do some stuff, man. Kid White, underscore. 17. 17. One seven. One seven. Do you usually go live, or is this like a in and off thing? Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to make it more consistent. Actually, my brother uh, Diego Calderon, really great host, really dope brother in Christ, man. That I've taken road trips with to like Texas and stuff. He usually is on here like every day. I'm not on here that much. That's why I'm a little rusty. I'm a little like, I appreciate y'all rocking with me, man, because I'm not usually the one doing this. But um, you know, I have a few ideas, and we're gonna you know, impact the culture. So Paul writes 23 at Wolf Fonts TV at Kid White 17. And I'm going to throw in uh, Darian. Yeah, because I really like this live. Bro, I appreciate it. Um, fat Dominican, I think this is. Shout out to the Dominicans. I haven't forgot that we talked about that. Word. Um, all right, man. Any last questions from the seven people that are in this? Appreciate y'all tuning in. No. Already, family. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too. And, man, I appreciate everyone's tuning in. If you're starting to come in now, we're about to end this. But you can always run it back. Peace. Jam the hype.